Hey friends, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It is another really rainy and dreary day today, but I decided to tweak with my camera settings and hopefully it looks a lot brighter on your end than it is in reality because it is very dark. I'm pretty much sitting in darkness right now. But in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some things that I've been implementing into my day-to-day -day routine that have really helped me instill some slowness and live a more slow-paced life. I have really been on a journey to live a more slow-paced life, especially coming from New York City, and my entire previous life before now has been extremely, extremely fast-paced, up to a point where I was frequently dealing with exhaustion and burnout and things like that. So I'm really working towards a life that is much more slow-paced, a lot more romanticized, and just enjoying the days and the little things for what they are. I've talked about this a lot recently, but this is the journey that I'm on and this is the journey that I have been sharing on social media lately. So yeah, I'm gonna be sharing some things that have been working really well for me lately and hopefully they are inspiring or motivating for you to also instill some slowness into your routines. So the first thing that I have been doing is reading first thing in the morning as opposed to looking at my phone. I have been putting myself in a really, really bad routine and bad habit of looking at my phone as soon as I wake up and it's just not healthy for me. It is very, very unhealthy actually. So I have been trying to swap out the, the phone time for reading time, especially because I haven't read anything in like six months, which is extremely bad coming from someone who used to be a bookstagrammer and a big reader. And I just haven't been the best reader lately. So this addition into my routine has actually been really great because I have been reading and I have been coming off the phone a little bit. So what I do is basically instead of looking at my phone and turning on my laptop when I'm having my breakfast, I will instead grab my current read and I'll read for five to 10 minutes while I'm having my breakfast and that's pretty much it. It makes a huge difference. These little things really, really add up. It has been really good so far. I did get some questions on my Instagram when I first mentioned that I started reading again on what my current read is. So I'm gonna share that with you right now. I am reading How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. It has been on my TBR for quite some time and I'm so glad that I'm finally getting into it. I'm about two chapters in and it's really heavy, I will say, but it is so well written and it just makes everything worth it when I'm reading it. It's just, it's just an enjoyable experience in terms of the way that it's written. And I was able to meet the author for a few moments at a certain point and she is super, super nice. So I'm very excited to continue reading this and finishing this. It is also Caribbean lit, which I really appreciate because I have a Caribbean background and uh, yeah, I'm excited to keep reading this. If you have read this or if you've heard of this book, let me know uh, what you think in the comments. Give me your thoughts. Another thing that I have been doing recently kind of piggybacks on the first thing. It is having no screen mornings and sometimes no screen afternoons. So like I said, I have just been making really bad habits when it comes to technology and looking at my phone first thing in the morning. And I did get a lot of great suggestions when I mentioned that I was getting a lot of eye pains and somewhat of a headache from all the screens that I look at all day. And thank you so, so much for those suggestions, by the way. But I think it's at a certain point where if I'm looking at my phone at 6 a.m. and not looking away from my phone or screens until like after 11 p.m., I think the, the best solution is just to minimize how much screens that I'm looking at throughout the day. So in the morning, like I said, I have not been looking at my phone and instead reading. And sometimes during my lunch break, I will also not look at any screens. I will have my lunch and kind of just enjoy the silence and the quietness of my home, <laughs> which is something that I really appreciate coming from New York City where I was just surrounded by constant noise. It has been helpful. I haven't had any eye pains or headaches in quite a bit. And it just feels good to not look at a screen for some period of time throughout the day. Another thing that I've been doing is having afternoon workouts. The afternoon part isn't specific for any reason. It's just because I tend to de dedicate some workout time after I'm working. So it ends up being in the afternoon, but I have really been enjoying my afternoon workouts. The dedicated time of working on my body and giving my body the movement that it needs and not necessarily looking at a screen. I am 
also disconnecting in this sense, I feel, and slowing things down so that I can really dedicate some time to moving my body. And I will also say that in terms of hangriness, I used to be someone that as soon as I logged off of work, I would immediately be hangry and I will run into the kitchen and really race to get food done just so that I can eat because I'm, I'm so hungry. But now that I've really gotten into a routine with my workouts, it has helped me slow down and be a little bit more patient and really dedicate the time to a workout and prepping for the workout, having the workout, cool down, all of those good things. And then go into the kitchen and slowly prepare and enjoy the preparation of making a meal as opposed to just, you know, like speeding through it just so that I can have something to eat. And yeah, that has been really, really great because now I can enjoy the time that I have when I'm cooking because I actually really enjoy cooking. Of course, it's a great thing when I can take my time and enjoy the process. Another thing that I've been doing is having Friday resets. Now, I know resets are mostly associated with Sundays, but we tend to have a strict schedule when it comes to the weekdays. And so we'll be working throughout most of the day. And then sometimes we have errands, we have some chores, we have some house maintenance things, just day to day adulting things that we do throughout the week. And we're pretty strict on it. We're pretty strict on our routine. So it's really nice to break out of that routine during the weekday on a Friday afternoon. I know a lot of people do this. I know there are people that log off on Friday afternoons and then they go straight into the weekend. But for us, that wasn't really a thing. And so now we kind of like, go out and have a car date or like a car takeout date or we'll order some takeout. We won't do any chores, no errands. We won't, you know, have any workouts or anything like that. We'll kind of just let loose and relax. And it feels like an extension of the weekend, which is really nice because there's nothing better than having a weekend that is longer than just the two days. So yeah, Friday resets have been really, really nice. It has felt so, so good to have a bit of an extension when it comes to relaxation. And the last thing, which I think is one of the most important things that I'm gonna mention today is just being present, especially when I'm socializing. So honestly, I'm not really socializing all that much. I am not traveling. I'm not really having any gatherings or anything like that. So most of my socializing comes with Ian, <laughs> who is my husband, if you didn't know, and we obviously live together. So uh, yeah, most of my socializing happens with him, but when I'm socializing with him, I'll try to be a lot more present in our conversations. It can be really easy, especially if you're living with someone, to kind of just scroll on your phone while you're having a conversation with them, or you'll be sitting on the couch and you'll just be like endlessly scrolling on your phone. It's really hard for me, especially because I work on social media and it is quite impossible for me to dis connect so I definitely do that I definitely scroll while I'm talking to him because I'm also working while I'm talking to him and so being present has been something that I'm really working towards whenever he's talking to me or having a conversation with me I'll make sure to put my phone down so that I can give him my undivided attention when we're in the car together say we're even going to the grocery stores it can be something as simple as that or taking a drive or whatever it is I will try to put my phone down more often than usual talking to him listening to music in the car together just anything basically I am trying Trying not to split my brain into different sections all at the same time and instead be more present and enjoy the moment and enjoy the moments when I am socializing with Ian having conversations with Ian and this also goes for like when I'm texting or I'm chatting with people virtually because that's all I've been doing lately I try to respond with a much more mindful response whenever I'm texting and stuff like that because sometimes there are days where I will kind of mindlessly give a canned response to text messages just so that I can swipe that notification away and it's part of just being overwhelmed and exhausted and burnt out and not having the energy to really communicate with friends and family members and so trying to be present is a really really big one. So yeah those are the things that I have been adding into my routine in order to instill a more slow paced life. I hope these are interesting interesting, helpful, inspirational, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas of your own. I would love to hear about your ideas and perhaps I can instill them into my daily routines. Perhaps you can inspire someone else in the comments who is reading. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me along my journey, my slow lifestyle journey. I hope to see you here on another video or somewhere else on social media. I'm I'm on Instagram and TikTok and all that good stuff. But yeah, thank you so, so much for being here and I will talk to you in next week's video.